So I've just started a new weekly podcast called The Audio Book Club, where Matthew English and myself talk in depth about a couple different books we've read every week. It's mostly focused around nonfiction stuff, but we will branch out to more classical literature at some point. And I'm producing the entire thing out of my apartment, and I've gotten some questions about my podcast setup. So I thought I'd give a quick overview of the hardware and software workflows that I'm using that anyone can emulate to produce their own podcast. Let's go. So this is a diagram I made of my AV setup, and I know that it might look confusing at first glance, but I promise you that it's not. And I'm going to cut to a shaky cam video I made where I go over each of these pieces in more detail, and I'm going to leave this diagram here in the bottom right corner for your reference. All right, so this is the podcast setup in my apartment. This is a 77-inch table that I have here. For comparison, most dining room tables are around 84 inches, so this is slightly smaller than that. But I wouldn't want to go any smaller for a podcast setup. I actually think this might be a little too small. I'd rather have something bigger. Anyway, let's start with the mixing board. So this is an Xenix X1222 USB six channel mixer. And this is probably overkill for what you would need for most podcasts. I just am using it because I happen to have it already. Um, you probably want something that's at least three channels because you want each person um, recording their voice to have a channel. And then if you have a producer, you might want them to have their own channel or you might want to just have a third person on. So you probably want at least three channels. And this mixing board is how you can adjust each um, guest volume individually, the gain, and then you can equalize out the different low, medium, and high tones of each person also. And you're going to probably want to start messing around with this because you'll notice as you start doing any kind of audio production that different people speak in different frequencies. So some people just have lower voices than other people, and you might need to adjust the low tones when they're talking so that your, your, your mixed audio sounds good and it's not too bassy for the person that doesn't have the low tones. And then this audio gets mixed together and it comes out via USB in the back. Now the mics that are going into this, um, the most important thing of any podcast setup is going to be the actual microphones that you're talking into. So I've experimented using a couple different types of microphones. These are the Blue Yeti USB microphones. These are the most uh, popular things that people buy when they're just trying to record audio for the first time. Uh, you can just buy them at like an Apple store or anything like that. Um, I don't recommend using USB microphones for a podcast. So in general, um, you want XLR microphones, so microphones that have XLR cables coming out the back of them, so that you can put them into an analog mixer like this and mix the audio before it goes into the computer. That's hard to do with USB microphones. I also don't like microphones that are sitting on a desk because if you're moving the table, you're gonna pick up uh, resonant frequencies on that microphone from that motion. So you definitely want microphones that are easily able to mount on a boom if you're gonna do any kind of podcasting. Uh, this is a $100 mic. This is an Audio-Technica AT2020. And then these are $400 mics. These are Shure SM7Bs. I've messed around with the quality between both of them, and I find that the Shure ones do sound noticeably better. And I think that for the most part, when you're doing any kind of like homebrew audio setup, you can just cheap out on basically all equipment and just buy the cheapest version of everything. But for the actual individual mics, I don't recommend cheaping out. I actually recommend getting good microphones and that might require you testing out different kinds, but you might need to expect to shell out for the actual microphones themselves. I mean, making a podcast is hard enough, you know, trying to get people to listen to what you're saying. If your audio doesn't sound good, you're just basically kneecapping yourself and making it harder than necessary. So this mic is mounted on like some really cheap boom that you could just probably find something like this in any AV store. And then this goes via XLR cable into the mixer. I should note also, I have these cloud lifter um, mic activators in between the microphone and the mixing board. And all this is going to do is it's going to amplify the gain on the microphone. So it's going to make it louder when it comes into the mixing board without like losing any quality. Because these Shure mics happen to be really low gain microphones. So they're really soft when they come into the mixer. And I, you don't actually need these. Um, you can just boost up the gain on your mixing board to make the volume louder. But I like using these because I don't want to have my gain all the way up because I want like more fine adjustment. And I would rather have the problem of my audio being too loud and having to adjust it down than not loud enough and having to yell into the microphone. So I'm using these mic activators, which are really good. Uh, I definitely recommend these um, because they make the audio quality still sound really good while um, it comes into the mixer at a high volume, which is really good. Uh, okay, so 
This is the same setup on this side with the mics going in via XLR cable to the mixer. Then I have an aux cable plugged into the mixing board here. And this goes out to this pair stone headphone amplifier. So what this is gonna do is gonna take the uh, audio, the mixed audio coming out of the mixer, put it into this guy, and then you can plug four different pairs of headphones into it and you can adjust the volume on each of them individually. And that will let you hear the mixed audio on the headphones. So Matt and I are both wearing headphones in the podcast. These are Audio-Technica headphones. I highly recommend these. I really like these headphones. They're really cheap. They're really reliable. And they come with really, really long cables, uh, which I like. I like long cables. And they also come with these adapters. So um, a lot of, like most headphone jacks are 3.5 millimeters, but some things require quarter inch adapters. So this is a quarter inch, 3.5 to quarter inch adapter which you can just plug into here and then plug the headphone in. And then you'll hear the mixed audio coming out of your headphones. Also, I have these webcams set up so that we can record video at the same time that we're recording audio. These are Logitech um, C930E HD webcams. So I like these webcams because they shoot in 1080p and they're pretty cheap. These guys come for like 70 bucks online. And yeah, they can record in 1080p and they come out to USB. So on this guy here, you'll have the USB cable coming out, and then I have this plugged into a USB extension cord. I think these are really useful to have around. I use USB extension cords for everything. So this just comes out USB, USB extension cord into the computer. And then I have a cheap tripod here for this guy. And this is a slightly more expensive tripod that I happen to just have lying around, so why not use it? Um, yeah, and then this is gonna come out via USB. So this is an iMac Pro here. So it has four USB slots. So we have the mixed audio coming out of the mixer into one USB slot, and then webcam one, webcam two, into two more USB slots, and then I have my keyboard for my computer in the fourth USB slot. If you don't have a computer that has four USB slots, you're gonna wanna use some sort of USB hub right here, where you can plug the three different USB connections in, and then that'll give you one USB connection out that you can then plug into your computer here. As for recording the actual video, I am using OBS. So OBS is free broadcasting software that you can find for Mac, PC, and Linux. And I'm not going to give a full overview of OBS, but I am going to just give a quick walkthrough of how I would use it to set up recording for my podcast. So OBS works in these things called scenes, and we're going to construct a new screen scene that I'm going to call screencast. And then we need to give it input sources. So the first source I'm going to give it is a video capture device, which is the first webcam. And if you, I already have them loaded into OBS, but if you don't, you just hit create new and it'll pull up a window of all the devices it detects. So I'll put that webcam one and then I can, you know, move it to take up half the screen. Then I'll go ahead and add another video capture device, which is webcam two, right? Which goes over here and I'll have mine go on top of that guy. Uh, and you can see that there's a green screen that we're using behind Matt that when we're doing this podcast, um, if we can chroma key that green screen directly from OBS. So if I went to Logitech webcam two and then right clicked and did filters, I can go into this chroma key filter and you can see that I can have it detect that green screen and then replace it with another image, but I'm not going to deal with doing that right now. Um, and then we'd want to add the audio input capture, which will be the mixing board that I have. So these three things combine into one scene that we can construct. There's also two modes in OBS. Uh, there's something called studio mode, which I'll normally always use when I'm recording. Studio mode allows you to flip between different scenes that you construct easily. We're only using one scene for the video, but if you want to do something like the way Joe Rogan does his podcast, where it zooms in on whoever's speaking at that particular time, you can construct multiple scenes. So I could have a scene of just me or a scene of just Matt, and then you can use studio mode to quickly transition between the scenes when a different person is talking. So that's a way that you could do this with like a more produced podcast, but I'm just doing this split setup and just recording out of that. And then when you want to record, you just hit start recording and then you talk as normally and it will save whatever you record as a .flv video file onto your desktop. If you want to live stream from OBS, you just hit that start streaming button. And if you go to the preferences of OBS, you can set up your stream keys. So you can use YouTube or Twitch stream keys um, where you can get, just get that off YouTube or Twitch, put it in the stream key right here, and then hit start streaming and it'll automatically live stream to that platform as you're recording. Um, I recommend if you're going to do a live stream that you have an audio recorder that sits between your mixing board and your computer. That way, if for some reason the stream glitches out, you're not gonna actually lose audio because it's all being recorded in a backup before it even hits the computer. Yeah, so that's, that's OBS, and then that's getting saved as an FLV file on my computer.
So I have a folder on my computer called OBS recordings, which is where the raw FLV files are getting written to from OBS. And if I look inside, I see that I have a file called raw recording.flv and I can open that and it should just open in VLC player. And you'll, and you'll see that this is the actual um, podcast recording. And what I want to do now is I can just upload this to YouTube, but for the actually making the podcast on like iTunes podcast center, I want to extract the audio out of this file. And not only do I want to extract the audio, but I know that I have 19 seconds in the recording of just messing around before the actual discussion discussion starts. So I want to cut out 19 seconds and I want to extract the audio. And I'm going to use FFmpeg to extract the audio. Now, if you're not familiar with FFmpeg, it's an essential tool for doing any kind of audio or video processing on your command line. So FFmpeg is free software. You can install it just by doing brew install FFmpeg. And I mean, there's a lot to know about FFmpeg. It's an incredibly powerful tool. So you can just read about it online. But just know that it's a command line tool for doing video and audio processing. And a lot of actual desktop software that you use for editing videos is just like kind of UI wrappers around FFmpeg. Like most things are just using FFmpeg under the hood. So one thing that I can do to extract audio is I can do FFmpeg and give it an input file. So I'll give it that raw recording.flv as an input. And then I can do dash a codec copy which tells it to copy the audio um, from that. And I can do dash VN to tell it to ignore the video. And then I'll give it an output, which is dot slash, let's call it processed dot, or let's just call this audio only dot M4A. So I'm using M4A, you can use MP3. It doesn't actually matter. And you'll see how fast that is, that it just extracted out the audio. And now I could just open audio only. And now I have... You probably can't hear that because I'm not recording my computer desktop audio, but you'll see that that actually is the audio um, from the podcast, and it took me one second with one command line tool just to extract it. Now, I also mentioned that I wanted to cut out 19 seconds off the beginning, so I can just run that exact same command, but just add this parameter dash ss, which basically sets, it, it, it means like seek the start. So you want to seek to a specific timestamp and then start the extraction. So this is denoted in seconds. So I can just do dash SS 19 and then hit enter. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it because I have a file named that. I'll hit yes. And now this will just extract the audio to that M4A file, but actually just start at 19 seconds. So that's the actual thing now that I want to upload as the podcast. So you might be wondering what a podcast actually is, right? Because it has to be something more than just audio files. Like there has to be something else there. And it turns out what a podcast actually is is an XML file, or more specifically, it's an RSS feed. But an RSS feed is just a kind of XML file that has this RSS tag as the top level tag. And that just tells the readers that it's using the RSS specification because XML can be arbitrary data and RSS is just a subset of that. Um, yeah. So anyway, an RSS feed is just an XML file and this contains all the metadata that podcast readers will use about your podcast, right? So I have a tag here called description that says Jordan Lee and Matthew English talk about books. And then if you look at the representation of our podcast on YouTube under this description, it'll say Jordan Lee and Matthew English talk about books, but that's coming directly from this RSS file. So I'm going to link to this file in the description of this YouTube video in case anyone wants to take a look at it. But you can also just look on the internet also for all the different tags that you have um, and what different podcast readers expect. Now, when you want to add a new episode, to a podcast, you just add a new item right here. So each item represents an episode. So for example, the one that we just recorded is about Sapiens, Homo Deus, and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. And you'll give it the title, the description, the summary. And you'll see that that's what you know shows up here, the published date, the title, description, the summary. But more importantly is you have to give it an enclosure and a URL. So right here is the most important part of each item. And this tells... Um, you where the podcast is hosted. So when you try to download a podcast on your mobile app, you have all the metadata from this feed.xml file, but the metadata is going to link to a public URL where you can actually download the podcast from. Now, there are a variety of different podcast hosting services, things like Libsyn and Blueberry. But as far as I can tell, they're kind of pointless because all that they're really doing is just hosting the episodes for you and then charging you a monthly fee for the service. But you can host the episodes at any public file storage system. So I don't really get the purpose of these hosting things. I'm just hosting them myself. And I'm using AWS S3 for hosting, right? So I will upload a new episode and I'll say that the link to this episode is in episode slash 5.m4a of my AWS account. And I've done an entire um, 
episode on AWS S3 before. So I'll link to that right here. So if you're not familiar with S3 at all, you can go check that out. But all that you need to do to publish a new podcast episode is you'll need to re-upload the RSS feed. So the feed with the new podcast that you added, um, you need to make sure to grant public read access to the files so that the podcast readers can read it um, and just hit upload. And that uploads the new feed. And then I will go to episodes and I would upload the new episode. So that M4A file that I just recorded, I'd upload that new episode right here. And then all that you're going to need to do to publish it, right? So now you have a new feed that has information about the podcast. You actually upload the audio file to S3. And then I would go to iTunes. So you got to go to podcastconnect.apple.com, which is Apple's podcast hosting portal. I'll go to the audiobook club. And this is where you tell iTunes where your, your RSS feed is. So when you first create the podcast, you just need to give Apple a link to your public RSS feed that can just be hosted in S3. And then they'll approve the podcast. And then when you want to publish a new episode, all you need to do is hit refresh feed. So when you hit refresh feed, that tells Apple that there's new information and to go ahead and resync the latest RSS feed. And then whatever new episode you have will show up on iTunes and anyone that's using the podcast app will get it. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm recording and publishing a podcast out of my apartment right now. So check out the audiobook club on iTunes or on YouTube. I think that we're doing some pretty good stuff with it. Um, and we're only getting better at it. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. And then I've kind of been on hiatus from creating content over the past few months, but going to start getting back into it. So look out for some new coding videos coming soon. All right, peace.